What's going on everybody? Madden 21 has officially dropped, which means it is time to be starting up our franchise. I've been very excited for this series for a while, and I'm really excited to kick it off with all of you today. I've been preparing graphics and stuff literally for the past couple of weeks. I'm going to put a couple on the screen real quick just so you guys can get a little preview of what uh, I plan on doing this year. As you can see, some scoreboards, some scouting and draft graphics because I really want to make the series fun. I want to add my own twist because obviously EA won't bother to make any changes to franchise mode. So the team we're going to be rocking with is the Jacksonville Jaguars going down to Duval County, Florida to rebuild Jacksonville. I'm very excited to use the Jaguars this year because I've had them as a potential franchise team for a while now, and I think that their roster and storylines really fit what I want to do in franchise. I play all pro simulation difficulty, as you can see the rest of these settings. I'm doing an online franchise instead of an offline franchise this year because with the PlayStation 5 coming out in a few months, I want to be able to carry over my progress in this series from the PS4 to the PS5. So normally when I start a franchise, I create a coach. I usually either a college coach or a legend of that team. Last year for the Lions franchise, I created Calvin Johnson, but this year I'm actually gonna make an owner. I wanna change it up this year, uh, do something a little bit different. So we are going to rock with an owner and the name of our owner is going to be Tez Lawson. If you watched the Lions franchise I did last year for Madden 20, the star quarterback of that team was Tez Lawson. We drafted him pretty early in the series. He won us a couple Super Bowls. So he is going to be our owner for this series. So without further ado, let's get underway. Uh, unfortunately, the layout menus are pretty similar. But as I said, even though Madden didn't really make any changes to franchise mode this year, we are going to add our own spin on it. So I'd like to introduce for roster with everybody as uh, we're going to go position by position here, starting with quarterback. And there is a big question mark at quarterback, in my opinion, with Gardner Minshew the second. Now, Minshew is the obvious starter this year. There's not going to be a QB battle for who the starter is this year. But the question is, is Gardner Minshew a franchise-level quarterback? Obviously, he stepped up pretty early into last year after Nick Foles got hurt. And for a late-round draft pick, he was actually quite solid. So I think there's a lot to be excited about with Minshew. We're going to determine based on his play whether he is our franchise quarterback that we build around long term or if we want to potentially draft a quarterback down the line. We are going to have a preseason competition for the backup spots. Uh, we're going to quickly talk about the preseason stuff next episode. Today we're just focused on the roster pretty much. Josh Dobbs, rookie Jake Lutton, and Mike Lennon are the main backups. As we move on to running back, Leonard Fournette is the starter here. Fournette is an 83 overall with superstar development. The only player on offense with superstar development were better as Fournette was the fourth overall draft pick a few seasons ago, and he's a really, really good player. However, there is a big storyline with Leonard Fournette, that being his contract. Leonard Fournette's contract is up after this season, and that brings up a question. Is he a player who we are going to bring back long term? Uh, Fournette has not been happy with the organization, and he might be a guy who is let go of at the end of the year unless we pay him a lot of money and make him want to stay. So Leonard Fournette is going to be the surefire starter this year, but long term, we're going to have to find out. Behind him, we got Chris Thompson. He's going to be the third down running back. And then a few guys uh, behind them in Ryquil, Armstead, and Divine Ozigbo. No fullback on the roster at the moment as we look at wide receiver. There are a lot of players I'm excited about here, including DJ Shark. Shark has quickly become one of my favorite players in the NFL in real life because of his explosiveness. He's a very fun player to watch. I loved him coming out of LSU a couple years ago, and he's a player who I'm really excited to build around. DJ Shark will be the number one receiver on the depth chart. He did make the Pro Bowl last year for what's that what that's worth. Obviously, the Pro Bowl isn't a super big deal, but still, being recognized as one of the top receivers in the game is obviously a great honor. 
The next best receiver we have is D.D. Westbrook. He will be the main slot receiver this year, and his contract is also up at the end of the season. Is he a guy we would like to re-sign, make him the slot receiver long term, or is he a guy that we either look to let walk in free agency at the end of the year or potentially look to trade? So D.D. Westbrook's future with his team is definitely going to be evaluated pretty early on into the season. There are a few other talented players at receiver, including Chris Conley, Keelan Cole, but the player I want to talk about is rookie LaVisca Chenault Jr. Chenault was the Jaguars' second-round selection, and for those who don't know, I follow the NFL draft in depth, uh, so I do a lot of scouting in the offseason. My main word to describe LaVisca Chenault is playmaker. He's very fun and exciting with the ball in his hands. He does have an injury history at Colorado, but if he can stay healthy, he's going to be a really fun player to have. Behind him, there are a few other players, most notably Colin Johnson, the rookie out of Texas, big-bodied receiver, so we'll see if we can potentially build around him. At tight end, the starter here is Tyler Eifert. He has spent his whole seven-year career with the Cincinnati Bengals before signing with Jacksonville this offseason. Obviously, Eifert has an extensive injury history, so if you were to hypothetically get hurt this year, uh, I do want to take a look at some guys behind him, most notably Josh Oliver. Oliver was picked in the third round out of San Jose State a couple of years ago. Hasn't really gotten a chance yet, but I do want to make him the tight end two on the depth chart and potentially see what he can do with limited snaps. The offensive line has some pieces, but there's also some, some holes. Uh, I do want to look at left tackle Cam Robinson. His contract is up at the end of the season, and I'll re-sign him if he plays well. If he doesn't play well, I'm fine with letting him go. Behind him, there is fourth-round rookie Ben Barch out of St. John's, a player I did like this offseason, so we'll see if we can potentially develop him. At left guard, Andrew Norwell is the starter here. He is an 83 overall, the number 7th ranked left guard in uh, football, so he's a very, very good player. The Jaguars signed him to a hefty contract a couple of off-seasons ago, so we'll see how long he can stay with this team, but for right now, he is a very good starter. We also have a very good starter at center in Brandon Linder, the 4th ranked center in all of the NFL. He is an 87 overall, the highest rated player on our entire team, by the way, so... Very, very good player there. At right guard, this is a position we're probably going to look to upgrade in the near future. The current starter is A.J. Khan, who isn't too special. At right tackle, Jawan Taylor, the second-year man out of Florida. A lot of people, including myself, expected him to be a top 10 or 15 draft pick a couple of years ago. Obviously, he fell to the second round where the Jaguars swooped him up. He is going to be the starter here at right tackle this season. I'm curious to see what he can do. At left end, a player I'm very excited about, Josh Allen, the second-year pro out of Kentucky. Allen had a phenomenal rookie season last year, and in my opinion, is the best building block on this entire roster. 23 years old, 81 overall with superstar development. Your modern finesse rusher. He has a lot of athleticism off the edge, good finesse moves. So, um... He's a really, really good player. I'm excited to see what he can do for this team, not only in the long term, but also in the present. I think Josh Allen is a very good player right now, and obviously he's going to continue to get better and better as this series goes along. Behind him, there's Aaron Lynch, who just actually retired in real life a couple days ago. I'm not really sure how I'm going to handle that. I'm probably just going to end up cutting him. At right end, Yannick Ngakwe is a very good player. However, he's played, I think, his final down in a Jacksonville Jaguars jersey. If you've been living under a rock, uh, Yannick Ngakwe's name has been in trade rumors throughout this offseason, mainly because it's been very apparent that he wants out of Jacksonville. He wants to get paid a hefty extension, and I can't see the Jaguars doing that. He is currently on the franchise tag. Apparently, in real life, the Jaguars are very close to trading Yannick Ngakwe within the coming days. Now, no matter what happens in real life, we won't be making a trade based off of what happens. I do plan on trading Yannick Ngakwe in this series, this season, within the next few episodes. However, it's not going to be based off of what happens in real life. I'm going to be making up my own Yannick Ngakwe trade. You know who will start at right end, however? The rookie out of LSU, Kalevon Chason. Chason was the 20th overall selection. He has the traits to be a very, very good pass rusher, and I'm really excited to see what he can do in this series. So getting him early playing time is going to be imperative. Obviously, the Jaguars drafted him knowing that they would 
probably trade Yannick Ngakwe in the near future. Looking at defensive tackle, former first-round pick Taven Bryan hasn't really put the pieces together yet, but he is going to be a starter this season. His fifth-year option is a decision we have to make in the offseason. If he plays well, we're going to give him the fifth-year option. If not, then we're going to have to start talking contract next year. Is he a guy who we would like to give a second contract to? There's also third-rounder Devon Hamilton. He's a player I'm excited about out of Ohio State. Left outside linebacker, no household names here. You did got the former last chance you star, Dakota Allen. At middle linebacker, Joe Schobert, who was signed to a very big contract in the offseason by Jacksonville. He's a player who's going to be sticking around uh, one term. Obviously, Jacksonville uh, spent a lot of money on him. I think five years, around 50 to 55 mil in that range. So he's going to be here for a while. There's also Miles Jack at right outside linebacker. Jack is sneaky young, only 24 years old. He is also locked under contract for a while. The Jaguars did sign an extension with him in real life, so Miles Jack won't be going anywhere. Him and Joe Scobert will be the main linebackers for a while in this series. There's also second year pro Quincy Williams, who I do think is probably going to start at left outside linebacker. He's a player I'm excited about. Moving on to the secondary, obviously the big name at corner here is C.J. Henderson. Henderson was the ninth overall selection in this year's NFL draft. In my opinion, he's the best pure cover corner in this draft and arguably has the highest ceiling out of any corner in this draft. Obviously, the statistic that jumps out at you here is the 50 tackling. Uh, he definitely made business decisions last year when it comes to tackling and effort. He didn't really want to getting too much contact because he didn't want to risk an injury which risks him losing money now that he's in the NFL I don't think that's going to be a worry at least until he needs a new contract so for right now CJ Henderson I think is going to be really good for us behind him there are a few young guys I like Perry Nickerson Trey Herndon Josiah Scott all three players I'd like to get playing time at some point this season at three safety, you got Gerard Wilson. He's going to be the main starter there. Daniel Thomas backing him up. I'm curious to see what he does in the preseason. And then at strong safety, the third-year man out of Alabama, Ronnie Harrison. Harrison was a third-rounder a couple of seasons ago, 23 years old, 74 overall with star development. Is he a guy who I'm going to keep in the long-term plans? That's something that we are going to figure out in this series during this season. Very curious to see what he can do. At kicker, you got Josh Lambeau, who is one of the best kickers in football. 96 kick power, 95 kick accuracy, superstar development. I think we're set at kicker for a while. And then at punter, we got Logan Cook, who is a 69 overall. Nice. Also, draft picks. The Jaguars own two first-round picks this season, obviously thanks to the Jalen Ramsey trade. Uh, the Rams gave up two first-round picks, one of which was the 20th pick last year, which was obviously Caleb on Chason, and then their first-rounder in this year's upcoming draft, along with a fourth-rounder as well. So I'm very excited to see uh, how those picks turn out. So here's a look at the projected depth chart. I do want to take a look at the preseason statistics next episode. The plan with next episode is we'll briefly look at the preseason stats, uh, cut our roster down to 53 players, and then have opening game against the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, the main changes on offense are that LaVisca Chenault is wide receiver 3, and Josh Allen, no, not Josh Allen, Josh Oliver is the backup tight end. On defense, Taven Bryan is the number one defensive tackle. Caleb Chason is the starting right end. CJ Henderson is the number one cornerback. And outside of that, no huge changes on defense. I'm making Josiah Scott the main kick and punt returner. I really want to see what he can do with the ball in his hands. I'm very intrigued uh, with his potential. And then here are the specialists. DJ Hayden at slot corner. Miles Jack, sub linebacker. DD Westbrook in the slot at wide receiver. Chris Thompson, third down back. And then there's the rest. So that'll end the episode. As I said just a minute ago, we're going to briefly talk about preseason results in the next episode. We're going to cut our roster down to 53 players and then play opening game against the Indianapolis Colts. So I hope you're excited for the Madden 21 Jags franchise. I know I am. Peace out.